Good morning and welcome to our online worship service. It is such a joy and a pleasure that you have chosen to join us for worship this morning. Before we enter into our sacred time of worship, I have a few announcements. One, if you're looking for a way to give to the ministry of St. John's and St. Albans, please do get in touch with me via email. My email is n, the letter n, henry, h-e-n-r-y, at ontario.anglican.ca. And I'll find the right venues for you to be able to give to the work, the vision, and the mission of St. John's and St. Albans. The second announcement this morning is about home communion. If you would like home communion, once again, please get in touch with me via the same email address, or you can give me a call, and I'll be more than happy to come over to your home and provide you with home communion. We'll be following all our pandemic protocols of masking and sanitizing. As we enter into our sacred time of worship, I invite you to take a moment to calm your hearts and your minds Invite the Holy Spirit into your homes, into your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, come. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Remember this, because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for you, your sins have been forgiven. You have been made right with God. You are justified. You are being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and one day you will be glorified as you stand in the presence of Almighty God. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship.
join me in saying the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. At this time, we will hear scripture being read, the proclamation of the word. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, the parable of the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey, Jesus said, who called his servants and entrusted them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I've made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who, he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I've made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you would be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you had scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I had not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I should have received what was my own interest at least. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will be will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away, 
and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our gospel today is a parable about investing. I believe the central meaning of today's gospel parable is take what you have and invest it in God's kingdom, trusting God to bring you the return. You either lose it or you use it. I want you to divide my sermon today into three parts. The first will be do not compare. The second, faithfully invest what you have. And the third, know your master. Do not compare. The first thing I noticed about this parable is that each individual received a different amount. One got five talents, one got two talents, and one got one talent. Verse 15 tells us that the master assigned the amounts to each according to their ability. If I were the guy with two talents, I would be a little bit upset that the other gentleman got five talents. But if I was the one who got one talent, I would be royally ticked off at the fact that the other two servants got far more than what I did. But the truth is, some people get more than other people. Some have nicer cars and bigger homes and better clothes and straighter teeth. Or, in my case, some have more hair and flatter bellies. Some are gifted singers and some are not. And some seem to have brighter and quicker minds than the others. You get the idea. It's easy for us to compare. And when we do, we often open ourselves to that green-eyed monster of jealousy. The problem with comparing is it either boosts our ego and as we look down upon others, or it makes us feel worse about ourselves as we look up at others and what they have. But no matter how good you are, you will always find someone who is better. And no matter how bad you are, there is always someone out there who is worse than you. But God gives to each of us according to our own ability. God does not care about the size of the gift that you give him. He cares about the faithfulness of the servant. A story. A young lad named Antonio sought to sing in his village boys choir, but his voice was too high and too squeaky, and the uh, chorus master would not let him come back after the tryouts. He then took up violin lessons, and the neighbor begged his parents not to let him practice anymore. Yet, Antonio still wanted to do something with music. His friends gave him a hard time because his only thing that he was any good at was whittling. When he got older, Antonio became an apprentice with a violin maker. His knack of whittling grew into a skill of carving, and his hobby became his craft. He worked patiently and he worked carefully. By the time he died, he had left 1,500 violins bearing his name, Antonio Stradivarius. They are more, the most sought-off violins in the world today and sell for more than $100,000 each. Antonio could not sing, he could not play, and he could not teach. But he used what he had been given by God and honored God, and his violins are still making beautiful music for us today. So will you take whatever God has given you and use it to God's glory? Be it your whimsical personality, be it some of those extra possessions that you've been storing up in the basement over the years, or in some cases, some of our hard-earned money, give it to those who need it just a little bit more than what we do. Notice in the parable where the money came from. It belonged to the master. You, when you realize that everything that you have and everything that you get is a gift from heaven above, you lose some of that anxiety about what you do and what you do not have. So the moral here is, do not compare. Faithfully invest what you have. The first two servants, while they received different amounts of money, took similar actions and got a similar return of 100%. Regardless of the difference of the size of their investments and their returns, Notice how the master said exactly the same thing to both of them. 
Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. You see, because they were faithful, they will grow and receive more. Now, it does not matter how much or how little you have. Invest it in God's purposes and see it grow. Remember Jesus feeding the 5,000. One little boy had two, five loaves and two fishes. The disciple Andrew, of course, asked that obvious question, as we know, in John 6, 9. How far will that go among so many? But the boy took what he had and he gave it to Jesus. And Jesus catered it to everyone and had 12 baskets left over. The point? Take whatever you have and put it in the master's hands and watch him bring his kingdom's growth, excuse me, to you. Fully invest what you have. Today's gospel also reminds me of a gentleman, Eric Lindell, a Scottish Christian runner in the 1924 Olympics featured in the movie Chariots of Fire. As his deeply relig religious family continuously cautioned him about all the time he was spending running. But he replied to them, God made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure and his presence with me. The truth is, each of us makes investments every day. We invest in people by building them up, by encouraging them, by helping them. We invest in institutions with our time, with our talent, and with our treasures. We invest in our children and our grandchildren, wanting them to succeed as we did. We invest every minute of every day in some kind of activity, whether it's playing bridge, whether it's taking a walk or going for a field trip, or even taking a nap. That time is our most precious commodity. You always can make more money, but you can never make more time. Once time has passed us, it has gone forever. So since you are going to invest, invest in things that count, things that will last, things that will make God smile. Invest in people. Invest in the spread of God's love. Invest where God can bring a return. And then lastly, know your master's heart. You see, the problem with the third servant was he was the one that got one talent. He did not know what to do with the master money because he did not know the master. And when you do not know someone, it is easy for fear to creep into the relationship. This servant buried his talent. He put it in a hole in the ground so that it did absolutely nothing and no good for anybody. In fact, it was a tragedy of a wasted opportunity. When the servant had to give an account, he blamed his master. And he said in verse 24 of our gospel, I knew you to be a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. In other words, this guy was saying, it is not my fault, it is your fault for I feared you. And he gave in to his fear. Fear restricts us. Fear immobilizes us. We cannot move. We are afraid to do something. We just want to get that talent out of our hand and so it doesn't go bad and something goes wrong with it. It's too risky to get to know sometimes our neighbors, to love our wayward grandchildren, to tithe to the church, to give to a charity, to make peace with that person who you had that argument with or to volunteer for an event. It's easier to hide from it all as fear grabs you. In this story, the master told the gentleman with the one talent, at least you could have invested the money into the banker and made a little interest. So apparently, 2,000 years ago, savings accounts actually made interest. Then the master had that wicked and lazy servant thrown where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of Matthew uses this explanation to describe hell, which is not a pretty sight. Fear immobilizes us, and then it leads us to destruction, all because we did not know the Master. We are afraid to take a risk 
because of some of the fear of the punishment that may follow. Yet, the master stands waiting. He, can, he waits to reward us with every little baby step that we make in our faith as we seek to use whatever he has given us to grow his kingdom and to secure our place in it. So no matter what you have, whether it's talents or talent, invest it with God and watch what happens to it. Amen. Together, let us proclaim what we believe that is say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of, Father, of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we have the prayers of the people. Would you join me in praying together? Whenever I end the prayer with, Lord, hear, the response is, and have mercy on us. Heavenly Father, we have gathered online this morning to hear your word, to worship with the communion of all the saints. Lord, hear and have mercy upon us. As we look into this world, Lord, we see all those who have been afflicted by COVID-19. Would you give them the comfort of your Holy Spirit? Would you proclaim your word in their hearts? Would you give them peace in this time of tremendous tribulation? Lord, hear and have mercy upon us. Lord, we seek to do your will. Help us go into this world to live according to your glory. Bearing the image of Christ, let us go forth into this world to give glory to who you are through what we do and through what we say. Lord, hear and have mercy upon us. Lord, would you give wisdom to all the frontline workers, the doctors, and the paramedics? Give them the wisdom to treat this disease. Give the researchers the wisdom to find a vaccine in the soonest. Lord, hear and have mercy. Amen. Would you join me in saying the collect for today? Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Go forth into this world as the image bearers of Jesus Christ, proclaiming his glory, living out and manifesting what it means to be people that live according to the glory of God. Amen.